Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark and I am your host. And in today's how-to, we are going to demonstrate how to install the spacer assembly of an adapter series type of disc coupling into an application from our good friends at Rexnord. Now first, we need to discuss what an assembly is. A spacer assembly is the portion of a spacer type disc coupling that consists of the spacer that accommodates the specific application's distance between shaft ends, the disc packs and hardware and the adapters that connect it to the hubs mounted on both shafts. Now, one of the advantages of using an adapter series coupling is that it is assembled and torqued by the manufacturer. Already done for you, you don't have to worry about it. It helps reduce the amount of downtime and tools required to either assemble the coupling on a new application or remove and install during a service interval of the connected equipment. Now, the tools that we're going to be used today are We've got ourselves a dial caliper. I also have a torque wrench that we're going to be needing. And then I also have sockets for the head of the cap screws. I also have a hand wrench. And of course, you always know that we wear our PPE. And no matter what the job calls for, safety is always number one. Make sure you're wearing the proper PPE. In this case, I've got my glasses on. Now, in addition to the tools, it's going to be important that you have the manufacturer's installation instruction manual as well as any additional drawings or manuals that are provided with any coupling because it's going to contain values that you're going to need that will have to be referenced. All right, our assembly is going to be mounted between the coupling's two hubs that have already been mounted to the equipment it is connecting. And this equipment is already aligned for our demo purposes. Now to start, we're going to need to install either the supplied cap screws, or in this case, half the cap screws that were supplied for mounting the assembly to the hubs between the adapter and the spacer. We will install them through the drilled holes, which we have already done in the spacer flange on both sides, and then we thread them into the adapter. Now you only want to thread them in until all the bolts heads contact the spacer flange, which is right in here. On adapter series disc couplings, the assembly is piloted to the hubs, so you have to compress the assembly so that it will fit between the installed hubs. Now, this is only for installation. Now, ordinarily, it may not fit in between this do, but we already, we've screwed them in just a little bit, all right, just to show you that it's going to fit in between there. We'll remove them before operation. Now, for demonstration purposes, as I said, we've compressed this so we can fit it between. And you only want to tighten it enough to fit in between the assembly, because if you do it too much, that compression can cause damage. So, as you can see, that I've got this just barely enough. You can still hear it scraping against the side. So, it barely fits in there, which is good. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen some of these bolts right here. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow it See, now I can actually let that go, and you can see how the compression has now gone the other way, so now it can stand on itself. We do this on both sides. Now, the next step is to install the bolts that are provided with the coupling spacer between the hub and the spacer, okay? And you install on both sides, and you only want to lightly tighten. So, I'm going to put those in there, like so. All right. I got one over on that side. And... There we go. Now I've got one over on that side as well. Now we're going to put bolts all the way around. And once all the bolts are lightly tightened, you want to retrieve the installation manual that we have right here. And then you review the required tightening torque of the bolts. And then you want to tighten them. And what happens is, and we all know that when you have a torque wrench, you're going to hear that click. And that click signifies that you've reached the required percentage of torque that you need for that bolt. Now, there's one last step to verify that the coupling is properly installed. In the installation manual, again, there's a dimension provided that you can measure to verify the spacing is correct. Now, in the manual, it's called the end dimension, or as I like to call, a dimension of sight and sound, where hubs come together and motors can run in synchronicity. Actually, that's not true. It's just the end dimension. But it's the distance between the inside of the adapter, right in here, and the spacer flange. That's where our caliper comes in right here. You're going to want to measure that on both sides, okay? So you'll measure, you'll get your reading out here, and then you'll do the same thing over on this side. And I can look at it and go, okay, now I've got both on the same side. We're good to go. We can turn our motors on, and we shouldn't be having any problems. 
Now, if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, remember you can contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location and they will be able to help you out. Hopefully this will help you with your practical application. And as always, the proper PPE, you have to wear it. I mean, there's no excuse for it. Safety is always number one. I had my glasses on today, even though it was just a demonstration. Also, you know what? Look for other Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. And thanks so much for watching. I'm going back into the end zone.